When's the last time you were on the internet? Uh, it's been a couple years. I think your dad is a person of interest in a missing person case. Excuse me? Just listen. 14-year-old cold case. Solved, then immediately unsolved. Oh no. 14 years ago, the two-year-old son of 80s TV star Beryl Grace, Jason Grace, was reported missing by his older sister. Thalia Grace informed the police that the two-year-old Jason was missing at the hands of their mother. When questioned, the Fallen Off movie star stated that the boy had been taken from her but refused to disclose by who. When pressed as to why she did not report him missing, she was uncooperative and babbling nonsense. A manhunt was initiated due to suspicion that the child was in danger and had not been simply surrendered. Unfortunately, not a single lead was generated from this search, and the case would have no revelations until 14 years later. Here's where we come in. Oh, no. Jason Grace, now age 16, was admitted to a boarding school in California. No ID, no transcript, no record of his whereabouts for the last 14 years, and at the endorsement of Tristan McLean, another recently fallen off movie star. No, where is this? Law enforcement barely had time to investigate before the boy went missing again. He disappeared from his dorm room, leaving with unidentified teenagers still in his school uniform and has not reappeared. Months later, law enforcement is still baffled with few leads. When questioned, the school board had a vague explanation as to how the boy was admitted in the first place with no record of previous education. You're in this too, by the way. Oh, what? The director simply stated that Tristan McLean's daughter, Piper McLean, was incredibly persuasive in convincing them to accept Jason as a student. Oh. Um. Did you charm speak Jason's way into school? Maybe a little. It is unsure what he meant by that, but he declined to comment further. Public confusion and the odd details of this case have led to many conspiracy theories, very few actually grounded in any evidence. Some speculate that the child has been in hiding to escape his mother and only reappeared after she passed in a car crash a few years ago. This offers no explanation for the recent disappearance, however. Some speculate that the disappearance may have something to do with the unknown biological father of the teen, and some have even suggested that it may be Tristan McLean himself. Ah! Ah! No! Oh my god, for what other reasons would he be attempting to place an idealist teen in school? This claim has slightly strengthened when a video resurfaced from an unexplained incident at the Grand Canyon about a year ago involving a class from a correctional school. Does the mist not affect security cameras? I, the students in the video were identified as Piper McLean, Leo Valdez, and who we know now to be Jason Grace, along with two other unidentified individuals, proving another link between the Graces and McLeans. Are we gonna get arrested again? Remember how you told me not to Google your name? Did you Google my name? I Googled your name. Well, that's dangerous, so how did you do that? Well, we know that Demigod Safe Internet exists because Daedalus' laptop was a thing. Mm, rest in peace. Annabeth was very upset. Yes, well, I reverse engineered it. Ooh. And using modern VPN technology, I think I've created something safe. You think? Yes, I've been testing it out by just sitting in public spaces and scrolling current memes. That's just click for instant death made entirely too real. Old meme, Percy. I am an old meme. Is that why you dress like a 2000s skater boy? You have a mullet. Hey, it's back in style now. And for your information, it's supposedly called a wolf cut now. In loving memory of our wolf boy. Anyway, I say I think because I'm nobody. I am just a simple teen at the Starbs. Piper, however, has volunteered to do the real test. And that is... I'm gonna make a TikTok account. Which is an app, correct? Very good. Piper is the elusive and rebellious daughter of a very famous celebrity who is currently under investigation in a missing person case. Excuse me? If she shows up on TikTok, people are gonna notice. I'm gonna become an influencer. Maybe even literally. Do you get it? Cause charm speak? <laughs> if she gets targeted immediately, then we go back to the drawing board. So you're a live test subject. A social experiment, if you will. Okay. What does it have to do with me? You're trending on Twitter. Why? So, so many reasons. Most recently having to do with a swim meet? I was shooting for second place. Just listen to this headline. Teen assumed to be dead for the second time, shows up to swim meet, and makes Olympic level time. I got nervous. The news was there, and I way overshot my normal time. I bet your coach was thrilled, though. Oh, he was ecstatic. 
I didn't realize it was going to put my name back on the news, though. Some of these headlines, dude, you have an entire YouTube series about you. How many views does it have? So many. That explains a couple things. I had some video quoted to me at school. They asked if I was in a cult for some reason. Did they think you were just going to say yes? Listen, Percy Jackson first appeared in the news at age 12 when he and his mother, Sally Jackson, went missing after a car accident. His stepfather, Gabe Ugliano, testified to the news that Percy was a dangerous delinquent that had killed his wife. He corroborated this with Percy's long rap sheet having attended and subsequently been expelled from six schools in the previous six years. Is that true? Uh, it's more like seven, eight now. A man after my own heart. I thought you liked your stepdad. He sounds awful. Oh, this was the other one. Paul's great. Okay, good. It was revealed later that the two had been kidnapped and separated. Both escaped their captor, Sally Jackson returning to her home and Percy being spotted with an unidentified girl who we now know to be Annabeth Chase and another student named Grover Underwood before returning home as well. The news actually managed to speak with Percy during the incident where he quickly won over the reporter and promised free appliances from his stepfather's company, although what actually took place was never fully explained. I forgot I did that. Investigators were left to speculate about the incident, most prevalent accusation being that the whole thing was a life insurance scam. Gabe Ugliano redeemed the life insurance policy on Sally Jackson before she was confirmed dead. A few weeks after Sally and Percy returned, Gabe himself disappeared and is missing to this day. It is theorized that Ugliano absconded with the money and potentially orchestrated the whole incident as the crash took place in his car. He was also a consistent poker player in a considerable amount of debt. It's unknown if Sally was in on this plot or not. However, the mother and son quickly moved to nicer accommodations and better schools. It's explained that this money came from the sale of a piece of artwork created by Sally, but she has not followed this with any other notable works, and many say that this is a weak cover story. Okay, solid theory, except Gabe is dead. Really? Oh yeah. Can I ask what happened? Um, so... The art piece that my mom sold was a hyper-realistic stone statue called the Poker Player. Okay. And part of my first quest was to chop off the head of Medusa, which still works after you cut it off. So murder. I didn't do it. I just supplied the resources. Plus, he was like an actual monster. Got it. So what else does it say? Yeah, let's just gloss over that murder confession. Many aspects of this incident are still unexplained, including a wild claim that Percy leapt from the top of the Gateway Arch in Chicago and somehow survived. Multiple eyewitnesses attest to seeing a teen leap from the arch enough to warrant investigation. Security cameras witnessed an altercation between a teen identified as Jackson and an adult with a poodle. The camera failed to capture the rest of the incident and the claims were discarded as impossible. That happened. How? Dude, I honestly don't know. I, I do have a little bit of a theory though. Explain. I think someone intervened. Poseidon? I, I don't think so. We hadn't even met yet. So? I kind of tested this theory with two vials of poison. Oh my god, Hazel told me about this. Wait, what? The idea was that I was too valuable to the prophecy for Gaia to just let me die prematurely, so I challenged her with a 50-50 chance of me drinking poison, and I was right. She told me she had great plans for me. And you think that extended all the way back to when you were 12? Maybe? She started messing with me when I was an infant, so you might be correct. It's weird. I wonder about Jason as well. Like, how did he spend that much time with the wolves as a little child and not die, like, even accidentally? Huh. Paul bought a bunch of parenting books because he's never had an infant before, and toddlers are not to be trusted with anything. They can't even have grapes unsupervised. What do you think he ate as a child? Like, certainly not what the wolves ate, right? You've upset the vegetarian. Okay, okay, I can buy into some intervention. I don't want to think about that anymore. That's why I'm retired. I've used up all of my immunity. Like, literally, it washed off in the river over there. That is a scary thought. Hey. YOLO. No, Percy. <laughs> oh my god, no more dead memes. Leo, keep going. Okay. Uh, 
Other claimed sightings of Jackson include on a bus where an altercation with three unknown elderly women took place. Furies. Percy was reportedly threatening them with a baseball bat. Riptide. Other passengers were unable to confirm if the women were traveling with Jackson originally or where the baseball bat came from as he seemingly did not board with it. It is speculated that these women could be Jackson's captors or in cahoots with Jackson's captor as an unknown man is still the number one suspect. Aries. Other passengers have said that the women may have recognized Jackson from the news and the teen simply panicked during an escape attempt. These claims have not been corroborated with any physical evidence and Jackson was not present when law enforcement arrived on the scene, making eyewitness testimony our only evidence that Jackson was even there. Much more concerning, however, are claims that the teen was involved in a gunfight on a beach with the unidentified man thought to be his captor. Also, Riptide, why such a violent cover-up? Is a gun not more dangerous than a sword? Once again, it's unknown where the teen sourced a gun, most likely explanation being that it was stolen from his captor, who was holding a similar one. No wounds were reported, and both escaped the scene before the law enforcement could get a hold of either. Jackson was recovered soon after, returning home of his own volition, either by successfully escaping or some have speculated he was released, citing the whole incident as a scam. Positing how a 12-year-old boy could have escaped from such a heavily armed individual and claiming the outlandish details of this case to be intentionally misleading or intended to make the boy seem to be in extreme peril to sell the story despite Jackson returning unharmed and never taking legal action against his or his mother's captor. Unharmed is a strong word. The boy has been shielded from questioning by higher authority, and Sally Jackson has declined any attempts to get her to explain these events. With no positive ID on the unknown man on the beach, the three elderly women, or the individual in the arch, the case has hit a dead end and has remained dropped as none of the known parties involved have sought legal action. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and that was just my first quest. I got a little better at avoiding the police after that. Is there more? Oh, we're not even close to the swim meet part yet. This is just a sea of related articles. You could have a whole book written about this.